Just like we have viruses that attack humans, there are also viruses that attack bacteria. And these were given the name bacteriophages. Viruses are not friends to the bacteria, but they are uh, our friends in terms of clearing this bacterial infection. Dressed in blue, these scientists are out on a mission. A mission in search of a scientific discovery that has gained traction globally. The bacterial phages. These are viruses that eat bacteria. The overuse and misuse of antibiotics has led to the resistance of these drugs, a situation that has now seen antibiotics become less effective in the fight against bacteria. It is a dangerous phenomenon and scientists are afraid that a time will come when a simple cut or a simple flu could kill. It is for this reason that scientists are looking for an alternative or a complement to antibiotics in order to prevent unnecessary deaths. This team from Kenya Institute of Medical Research, led by bacterial phage specialist Ivy Mutai, are here at the high-rise dam in Nairobi to collect what they say could be a game changer in the fight against antimicrobial resistance. When you talk about viruses, your mind will go to something that is dangerous to your health, like coronavirus, Ebola virus. But scientists are here to collect viruses that they are saying are beneficial to you. A report published by Lancet on the 12th of February 2022 shows that AMR was a direct cause of at least 1.27 million deaths in 2019, which is more than deaths caused by malaria and HIV and AIDS. Where there is bacteria, there is a phage. So what we basically do, we collect the, uh, the samples, the environmental wastewater in volumes of 1 to 2 litres, take them to the lab and process so that we can at least enrich uh, our bacterial strains in the lab that are multi-drug resistant to, to screen for phages against them. Phages are defined as viruses that solely kill and selectively target bacteria. They are 100 times smaller than bacteria, rich in sewers, abattoirs, rivers and hospital affluent. On this day, the collection of samples target three different sites so as to improve the chances of getting a variety of phages. Phages, unlike antibiotics, are specific. They kill a particular strain of bacteria, thus the more reason to collect them from different places. For us to use the phage in treatment of a specific bacteria in our, for instance, gastrointestinal tract, we, we are looking at how is it going to cause more harm than good. Then if not, why not use it? After hours of sample collection, we accompany these scientists to the lab for the next step of action. This is a membrane system of 0.22 micrometer size, so which will only allow a filter to pass through which contains phages only. So what will be contained in the filter system or the filter membrane is only bacteria. So we are only interested in the filtrate and not what is remaining. When it comes to identifying the phages, the samples will be left overnight and we will join them again to determine whether any good viruses were found. 24 hours later, the results from the samples collected in the three locations confirmed the presence of phages. Clear patch indicates a lytic zone and the presence of phages. So for further studies or phenotypic characterization, we want to, um, to purify each phage strain according to its morphology. So for instance, here we are seeing that uh, we have uh, different sizes of plaque morphologies. We have the one that is big and the small ones. So we are separating the, the strains according to their morphologies. So we can also see on this plate, this morphology is not the same as this plate. So this is phenotypic characterization, and then we can subject to other physical chemical properties such as temperature, how stable are they in different temperature conditions, after which we can now send to our partner labs to do the genomic characterizations of these, of these uh, phages, and now to see how safe are they to use for therapeutic studies. We can also be able to see uh, contamination and uh, any form of uh, resistance to the phages from the spot test also. Like uh, for this we can see a form of uh, resistance uh, which is indicated by the, uh, something like an additional growth over, over the clear zone.
The confirmation is a positive sign that phage therapy is a reality that only awaits a regulatory framework. But we know that some of our major diseases are things... Dr. Lillian Musila, a principal scientist at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, says even though phage therapy has not been approved in Kenya, it is a reality that we cannot run away from. Based on the trends of antimicrobial resistance, it is a matter of time that antibiotics will be rendered ineffective if nothing is done. And for them, they are developing a phage bank to be used when the need arises. Once we see that they can work effectively in the lab, we are developing animal models where we can mimic human infections and then treat it. That's the second um, level of, of proof that these can actually work. And then from there, then we can transition them into small human trials. In a, in a very controlled, controlled setting. Phage therapy was used 100 years ago in Soviet countries, but the practice was abandoned in 1940s in favor of antibiotics. The availability of these drugs, especially over-the-counter, led to the misuse and overuse. Bacteria adapted to these drugs and evolved, leading to antibiotic resistance. <laughs> In 2015, a patient was cured in the United States of America using phage therapy and emergency protocols. This is after all other treatments failed. Since then, phage therapy has been termed as a possible weapon against ever-rising threats from superbugs. An antibiotic can kill many types of bacteria. And the problem with antibiotics is they kill both the bacteria that's making you sick plus all the other good bacteria that are in your body. So they actually mess up your... Your, your bacteria population in your gut. How phages work, they lock onto specific bacteria that is meant to kill and then inject their DNA to produce more phages. So many that bacteria explodes and billions of these phages are released to repeat the same cycle. They're called smart drugs. Why, why are they called smart drugs? Because they amplify themselves. Remember, they're being grown and they, they amplify. So actually, if you deliver a small dose, for instance, to your wound, if you come back in, in a, a couple of hours, they'll have replicated and increased. So they're magnifying their dose as they're, as they're treating the infection. Administering phages to a patient takes different forms from inhaling, applying, swallowing and injecting the viruses. A number of studies have found this therapy effective and efficient, but more research needs to be done to ensure that this treatment protocol is totally safe for human use. We want to begin to, to bring in uh, clinicians on board. We want to bring in the pharmacy and poisons board. We want to bring in pharmacists on board so that they understand what phages are and how we can work. We also need to begin to engage the, our regulatory bodies, our IRBs, our institutional review boards, our ethical uh, committees to understand what phages are and how they can be used. As research continues around the world, countries that have been given a green light to use phages on emergency cases have partnered with this team from Kenya to supply the already found phages. When we screen uh, for the phages here, we share them with our partners and then they try to uh, screen them and see if they can be well incorporated into cocktails or even for individual use. And then they bank them in a library that is available for, for phages. It may take five to ten years for this therapy to be fully incorporated in Kenya, but scientists believe if the government of Kenya, together with other stakeholders, come together to support this research financially, infrastructure and policy frameworks, this dream could come true sooner. After the collection of samples from rivers, dams and abattoirs that are said to be rich in these bacteriophages, scientists are here to classify which virus feeds on what bacteria. It is a fairly new field in Kenya, but one that scientists are saying will be a game changer in fighting antimicrobial resistance. Emily Chebet, Citizen TV, Nairobi.